three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? This is the Undefeated by Choice podcast brought to you by Still Fist. We've got, this is fight week, man. It's the kickoff to fight week. It is Sunday night. Uh, I'll get this out to you Monday. So officially, it'll be within the fight week rules uh, of calling it fight week. And I am so excited for this card. I, I feel like it's been forever since we've had a Still Fist card. And it's probably been maybe a month. But um, man, I, I love going to the fights. I, I, love, I love this job. So um, I'm super excited for fight week uh i've got all my interviews in i only missed one uh and still still can happen but um uh you know i it, it, it's uh, i just i can't wait to get this week going uh I, you know, weigh ins on thursday uh your fans are welcome to come out to those um there's just a lot of good things happening um had a good uh meeting with the owners of still fist and and things we're planning on doing for the company and for and for the the promotion and and uh it's just all good things so i'm super excited about all that uh this is an episode of just my opinion so it's just me today rock rocking it solo um, um, and I'm looking at my camera right now. And, uh, if you listen, if you're watching this on video, um, I'm not happy with this camera angle. So people, you've seen a few different camera angles. Please help me out with the camera angle. I can't, I can't find one that I like. I mean, basically now I'm just, just, just putting a, putting a spotlight on my bald head because I look down at my computer and then all you're seeing is the top of my bald head. Uh, I got to figure something out because this just, this just ain't working for me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm not happy with this, but if you're listening to it, the voice sounds the same. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to soldier on for this one. And the next one, next time I'm going to figure something out. Um, we just had a UFC card last night, uh, the Lawler versus, uh, Covington. And, uh, uh, it was a fight night card, so it was free on ESPN, and it's a good thing it was free because I would have been pissed off if I had paid money for that junk of a card. Uh, I'm sorry, I you know I, there was nothing about that card that pumped me up. There's nothing about that card that was exciting, and and I will say this: there were a few fights I missed uh, on transition from the gym to my house. I was driving, so I was being a responsible adult, and I wasn't um, watching the fights while I was driving. So, and I think I stopped and got some groceries. But that's how bad the prelims were in the early card. Were was that I felt like I'm, you know, I'm just going grocery shopping. I'm gonna pick myself up some salad dressing, some uh, you know, mustard condiments basically um because I, I i was not i was just not into this card and um uh i don't know what it was it just it was a crappy card and you know they really didn't they really didn't put any promotion into it they really didn't put any emphasis on it and and this could again this could have been a fight of the year potential robbie lawler when has he not had a fight of the year candidate fight this card but up until that point he has fight every fight is a fight of the year candidate so why not why not promote it why not put money behind it why not try to sell it then you have colby covington who you know does his best to to try to build ratings i mean personally i cannot stand the man but i'll tell you what he's trying something he's trying something he's trying to put money behind himself because the ufc put, won't put money behind him so he's trying to he's trying to build it up on his own um all by himself and and as as cringy as it is as annoying as it is as, as just lame as it is at least he's trying um which is more than the whole promotion can say for themselves so um you know the i was really excited for the clay guida jim miller fight you know that how does that not look like a how does that not look like a just a just a barn burner you know what i mean like clay guida we all know him jim miller we all know him we all know how durable and how good they both are so you know this is this is the card that you know we thought this is the card that we thought or the fight that i thought was going to steal the night and I, it wasn't a secret like this is the one that we were all looking for and um you know it didn't it didn't really live up uh Clay caught um, Jim early, uh, and then and then as Clay went into attack, Jim caught Clay. Uh, Clay fell into his arms. He caught him in a guillotine and put him out. 
to sleep. And it's funny. It's funny. There's actually three, I believe, three chokes uh, that put fighters completely out. And because it was on ESPN, uh, Dominic Cruz is like, they're okay. They're okay, folks. Don't worry. They're fine. They're up. They're moving. That's just a choke. They are out. They're a lot. And like he was, you know, on a pay per view, these are fans that have paid to see it so they know what they're getting into. Uh, ESPN could just be anybody stumbling across the channel thinking they're going to give it a shot. So he had to, like, <laughs> He was like, you know, consoling the fans, letting them know that these fighters are okay and everything's going to be all right. And, uh, you know, it, it, you got to do that. You're, you're appealing to the masses and not everybody likes to see a choke out. So, um, uh, but I was surprised at how many chokes went to, I think, I believe there was three that went, I know there was two for sure, but to the point where the, the fighter was completely out. They didn't tap, they just went to sleep. And that's definitely dangerous, you know, we need to do better at that. And that's more on the fighters, they know, they know. Every fighter knows, you know when you're about to go out, you need to tap, you need to protect yourself and protect the ref in that case. Cause you know, they're doing their best to check on you. They're doing their best to, to see what's, you know, see if you're okay. And, um, you need to help them out. Let them know oh, I'm going out. I'm going to go to sleep. There's no, there's no dishonor in tapping, uh, when you're about to go out, it's all the same. You're either going to go to sleep or you're going to say, or you're saying, I'm going to go to sleep. There's no, there's no difference. I hate the mentality of, you know, I don't quit. I'll, I'll, I'll go, to, I'll die. I'll get knocked out before I'll go to sleep before I tap. Then you're going to have brain damage. Then you're going to be hurt. Um, stopping blood flow to the brain is never, a wise choice and, and stopping blood fl flow to the brain to the point where you pass out is stupid. So just don't be stupid, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, these guys are professional. So well, who am I? Uh, you know, and then we had the main event, uh, Colby Covington, Robbie Lawler and uh, you know, Colby Covington's, uh, he's good. He's good. Um, he's boring. I feel, um, and, and I say that in a lot of people are are you kidding me? He's boring. You know, he took Robbie down at, at will. He was constantly staying active. He was transitioning from, from choke to choke or from, you know, move to move. Uh, I guess transitioning from position to position is what, is what they would say. Um, you know, he, he threw a record amount of punches. I think they said he threw 500. He landed like a hundred or something. I think that's, that's what the number was. Um, but the thing is, is, I mean, if you're throwing that many punches, you probably should be knocking dudes out. Like that's what, what, what are we doing? You know, you, you weren't hurting Robbie. I mean, Robbie barely, barely looked beat up and he had, he had a, a few cuts, but I mean, I've seen him a lot worse taking a lot less damage. Um, if that makes sense. I saw him, I've seen him a lot worse without taking as many punches. I guess I should say like, I don't believe Kobe, I mean, that just, Kobe seemed like he had zero power. He seemed like he was, I mean, Robbie was just kind of ducking and, and weaving and bobbing and weaving. He was getting hit by some stuff, but never looked like he was rocked, never looked like he was phased. If you're landing a record amount of punches and you don't phase the dude once, I don't know, man. That's, that's embarrassing. That's rough. That's a rough, that's a rough way to go. Um, so all you can do is wrestle. You can't, you, you're not, you know, you, you can't put Robbie away. Like, I, I, I mean, I guess that goes to how tough Robbie is. Cause Kobe has put people away. He has put people to sleep. So, I mean, I guess it just goes to tough how, how show how tough Robbie is. But I mean, if you're going to be landing the record amount of punches and you're still not putting someone out, I don't know, man, I, I, I'm not impressed. Uh, and, uh, so, and then, and then, and then this is just where it gets cringy. This is where I just, I can't take it. I cannot do this anymore. I'm, I'm so tired of it. You know, I, I'll compare the UFC to the office, the television show, the office. If you all seen the office, it was great for so many seasons. It was amazing. It was one of the, it was probably the best show on TV. Um, it, the writing was, was beautiful and just hilarious. And then the writers left and they went and created parks and rec, which became the best show on TV. Uh, and the writers that were left on the office were awful. They were terrible. The show just plummeted and I only gritted through it because I'm nostalgic and I'm, I'm a loyal person and I was into the show in the beginning. So I was going to finish the show and, uh, but it was unbearable. It was, 
it was painful to watch. That's what the UFC is becoming. I feel like since this new company is taken over, I feel like they have new writers. And it is not good. It is awful. Um, they had, so they had Kamara Usman on commentary, and then they decided to bring Colby Covington up so that they could have an interview. And first, Rashad Evans and um, Karen Bryant did their interview, and, and, and it was okay. You know, Colby was actually, he was actually doing okay in the interview, but you could tell he was just saving up all his, you know, all his talk for, for, uh, for Kamara. And, Camaro jumps in and is like, I got a question for you real quick. When did your balls drop? And it went into this disgusting display of just nonsense, just stupid talk for stupid talk. They both say, kept saying, well, let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. And Kamaru's taking his jacket off. And, and, and the, the worst part of it was the, the most disgusting part of the whole thing was before they, before Colby even stepped on in, into the interview they had security coming and lining the back of the of the of the shot of the frame like they needed to get security in frame to make sure we knew that these two could just throw down at any moment and it was it was gross it was gross and then so then you have Kamaru uh get you know you're talking crap and then you have their head of security, I believe it is, um, or maybe it was Jeff Nowitzki. It kind of looked like Jeff Nowitzki, but I think it was their head of security, uh, like, like spooning Kamaru. So Kamaru's talking crap, and he's got this guy with his arms around the back of him, like you know that junior high uh, boyfriend girlfriend that you know just got together, and they just have to be touching twenty four seven. They walk down the street, and one of them's holding behind the other one, and they you know you know what I'm talking about, like one's behind the other, and they walk in sync and try to. It, that's that's what he, how he was holding him. They were spooning, and then Colby had the same thing. The guy wasn't like as wrapped around him, but he still had like he still had his hands around Colby and his hands on Colby's hips. And it looked like. Two guys fighting with their girlfriends, uh, hanging behind them, holding on to them. Uh, it was, it was so, it was awful to watch, and and it was completely planned. Like they brought security out for that reason because these two are so uncontrollable. You never, first of all, you don't need Kamaru on commentary. He's not that good. He's not a great com. He's not great on commentary. Uh, they could have had. They could have had anybody, and, and they, you know, I would have said Tyron, but but it probably would have been, you know, he probably would have, you know, had the same kind of situation with Colby. So don't bring a 170 year in there. Bring there's plenty of other people you could have you could have had in there. So, um, you know, Rashad, Rashad was just laughing like at a point where he was kind of like rolling his eyes like this. Like almost like he was like, is this what my life is now? Just this <laughs> BS. And I just, uh, you know, I, I've talked about the crap talking era, and I've talked about all, you know, this, you know, enough times. It's just, it's gross, man. It's gross. It's 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 peddling. It's 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 not what this sport is. It's not what this sport is about. Um, and I get, I get it. You have to understand though, and this is this is super. Um, this is super important that um, you understand this is that uh, real rivalry sells fights. Real rivalry, real hatred, real anger, um, real animosity, you know, that that really does sell, sell fights. John Jones and Daniel Cormier, as much as I don't want to watch them again, I don't care to watch that fight again, I probably will be very interested in it because those two hate each other. They hate each other with a passion. You know, uh, Nate Diaz and, uh, and Anthony Pettis, they don't like each other and they haven't liked each other for a long, long time. That's an interesting fight to me. Well, Nate Diaz is thing because he hates everybody. But, you know, it's like those are, that's, those are interesting fights. These Conor McGregor's, these Colby Covington's, um, you know, these guys of this nature, even like Mickey Gall, ugh, ugh, his post-fight interview was disgusting. You know, calling out uh, Diego Sanchez saying, you knew I was sick, you knew I was sick, let's run it back. Dude, Diego Sanchez mauled you, mauled you, and he's old as shit, and he still mauled you. Just take the lump and 
move on man move on don't try to run that back you're embarrassing yourself and it's it just this new wave of fighters is just gross so you know i just this whole the whole fight card was just bogus i mean there were good fights okay there were there were good there were good fights um you know uh nazareth uh hack Parust looked like and, and and Hakeem Silva they both or Joaquim Silva they both looked great they really did that was it was a good fight um and that's probably that was probably the fight of the night um and uh and uh and so like you know you put enough fights on a card there's going to be there's going to be some good fights but as a whole the card was not great it was it was garbage um so with that being said let's move on to the next there's another card coming up next weekend and you know doesn't really matter because it's fight week for still fist so friday night you're going to be out in salt lake city watching the fights and then i guess saturday if you need a little more you can go and watch this uh ufc i believe um i believe oh it's a fight night so it's free it'll be on it'll be on uh i believe it'll be on espn so that's good it's free because again i'm looking at the card oh you uh, prelims you're gonna watch on espn plus and fight card you or main card you'll watch on espn plus um so uh this one you know valentine valentine the main main event valentina shevchenko versus liz liz carmouche uh i mean who's going to beat shevchenko at this point i don't see a lot of people it's going to be pretty pretty one-sided liz Car carmouche is tough as hell uh she's game she's you know have been in title fights before uh I just don't, I mean, Valentina, <laughs> I mean, unless she gets caught or unless she gets sloppy or unless she gets old real quick, I just don't see it happening. I don't see Liz taking it, but good luck to Liz. Um, you're tough as hell. Nothing but respect for you. You know, you're number three for a reason. So yeah, go get it. Go, 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 go get, go, go try, go try to get that belt. Um, Vincent, Vincent Luque versus Mike Perry is a co-main event. That's exciting. Mike Perry is always exciting. He always brings it. Um, Vincent Luque is a young up and coming prospect ranked number 15. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe he's, let me, let me look at him real quick. Cause I believe he's, he's 15 and six uh wins most of his fights i mean he's pretty well rounded most of his fights come by knockout but he's got quite a few submissions um high volume striker he lands about five 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 shots a in a minute five shots a minute um 50 percent of his 57 uh, percent of his strikes are significant strikes so he's good yeah he's 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 good um I had to look him up real quick because I, I know I, his name's been out there a lot, but I wanted to make sure he was as good as I, if he was the guy I was thinking about as good as I thought he was. And yeah, he's 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 a game fighter, so that'll be exciting. Um, should be a fun one, but you know that's probably like a Kate Clay Guida um, Jim Miller fight. Like you think it's gonna be good, and then it's gonna be over super quick, and you won't get to watch it. Um, you got uh, Vulcan Olsdemir versus Ayer Latifi, um, and I mean. Both dudes got power. Both dudes are scary, and I almost want to just say this one's probably gonna end up going to decision because of who they like. Because they'll both respect each other's power so much, they probably probably won't be a lot of, um, you know, th they're probably gonna be a little reserved. That's just gonna be my guess. Um, it's weird to start to say that now. To start to say these two power, you know, when they put two power punchers against each other, because usually like these two are gonna knock each other out. But now you're starting to see these these guys that are these high level power strikers uh, that are putting everyone to sleep, and they put them up against someone who's matched evenly with them, and then all of a sudden they stop doing what they're doing. So, um, but I see Latifi taking that fight. He's kind of a beast. So we'll see. Uh, the, other, the only other fight I you know am excited to see because I know this girl's game and she's always brings it. She's super fast, really active. Is Tisha Torres versus uh, Mariana Rodriguez, and you know I just I like the way Tisha Torres fights. I think. Teeny, teeny tornado is a perfect nickname for her and she just goes in and, and fights uh she just you know gets gets wild so um but you know she doesn't have the best knockout record <laughs> she's uh won zero of her fights by knockout and uh, only 10 percent of her fights by submission so if she's gonna win it's gonna be by decision um her opponent 
Uh, Mariana is uh, a little more well-rounded and 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 got a lot. I mean, she's won half of her fights by knockout. So um, she and she yeah, so she's there. There, uh, the uh, this fight's gonna go. Uh, my guess would be uh, either knockout by Mariana or Tisha wins by um, decision. Uh, Mariana has won a lot of fights by decision. Well, she's won forty percent of her fights by decision, but uh, I think volume-wise, it's hard to keep up with Tisha. But I don't know this Mariana girl very well. She's eleven and 11 0 and one. So obviously she's good. Obviously she is legit. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the other fight I'm excited about. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one to watch. But other than that, you know, it, the card, the rest of the card, I'm not. I don't, I don't even know most of these people's names. And you know, I, I've I am a UFC fan. I know I'm sitting here, you know, bagging on how their production has been, how their shows have been. Uh, but you know, this is the the this is the organization that got me into the sport, that got me working for Still Fist uh, because I loved it so much. I wanted to be involved with the sport, and you know, I, I reached out to the number one promotion in Utah. Uh, and, and so I have to, you know, say that they did things right for a long time. I just feel like they could do better promoting their fighters. I mean, these are the fighters who are making them the money and the fighters are the ones that are bringing in, um, you know, uh, they're the ones that are doing everything. So, you know, pay a little more attention to them, give them a little more, a little more attention. And, and also, you know, getting, letting, you know, what I do here at the podcast, letting people know their, their personalities more like people love fighter interviews because they want to get to know the fighters. And it really only helps the fighters getting them sponsorships, getting more fans watching them. So I just think, you know, as an organization, you just owe it to them to give them more attention. You know, I don't know a lot of, a lot of, uh, local promotions that do uh this type of thing where they do the interviews with the fighters so you can get to know them better and it's really just to put the spotlight on them because that's they're the, they're the whole show um I gotta tell you, uh, I'm excited. Uh, Rachel Ostovich is on the card because I think she's a gorgeous woman. So, um, and you know, she's there was a lot of attention in her last fight, which was a tough fight. Uh, she came off of you know some domestic abuse, and um, so, you know she handled that like an absolute pro. Uh, but I, won't, you know, I'm, I know she wants to get anybody wants to get that behind him. You don't. That's not what you want to be known for. Is the fighter who was you know beat up by your boyfriend uh that's you know that's 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 not the image that anybody wants they want to be known for their fighting uh and she's had some good fights she's had some good battles so that's what she wants to be known for so i'm excited to see her back and and um you know and they they've put her you know she's the first fight of the night and i think that's a good spot for her because then she won't get as much of attention and so that whole incident can get pushed further behind and you know the further it gets behind the more we can just focus on her as a fighter so good luck to her um it's uh it'll be exciting to see her now i have to get back to still fist because we got a fight this week and uh you know i've talked a lot about all the fights on the card there's two more fights i want to talk about that when i did my uh, just my opinion segment last week um i was like there's there was like three fights so i was like i don't know how these ones are gonna go i think it's three or four fights so i was like i don't know how these ones are gonna go well i got some information information that i want you all to know that's going to get you more excited about this card so we already know we already know that the brown martinez fight main event is going to be awesome we already know that the ariano and eastwood fight is going to be awesome super uh uh, fast pace. We all know that the Hildebrand uh, Taplin Ross fight is going to be a show of who lands the hardest punch first because both these guys are giants and they both hit really hard. We both know that the or we all, we both we all know that the Kaufman Spice fight is going to be a great fight uh, and it's and it's a title fight for the women's for the vacant women's belt. So the you know winner is a is the champ and the, the defending champ. So after that, so we already know that you know. This is, that's going to be a great fight. The Devlin Frazier fight, we know it's going to be a tough fight. We know it's going to be uh, volume versus power. Uh, we know that the Tor Torres Gilman fight is going to be a great fight. Um, two women is going to throw heavy volume lots of punches one of the fights i said i didn't know much about but i thought it was gonna be a great fight was uh, the diaz faust fight now the, what makes this fight interesting is that they're both amateurs but they both want to be pro now diaz called um kevin Patton and said hey i want to you know take my first fight and i want to go straight to pro and kevin's like 
we don't do that here at Stellfest. We don't just throw you into pro. Like we care about our fighters. We want our fighters to be, you know, to build up. We want them to have experience. Um, we want to put on good fights and coming in first time as a pro, we just don't do that. Um, so he said, but I'll tell you what, we have a, a young fighter that's been training for a real long time out at another, at another, um, pro, another camp in, in, um, and he's been training for a long time and he's someone that wants to go pro with his first fight as well. So both of you want to go pro your first fight. So we're going to match you two up to each other. Both of you, both your coaches, both of your teams think that you're both good enough to go pro right off the bat. Since we don't do that, we'll put you two against each other. And that way it will, you know, you'll have the experience of someone who th also thinks they're on the level as pro. So it's actually a good way to ease them both into to, to this thing. Um, as far as, pe you know, two guys that want to jump right into the deep end right away and him saying, well, why don't you guys jump in together? Um, we're gonna, it's an amateur fight because we don't go straight to pro. But, you know, if you think you're on the pro level they, and everyone thinks this kid's on the pro level, why don't you two fight and we'll actually see if you guys are on the pro level. Genius. Genius matchmaking by the, by, by Still Fist. Um, so I I really that that's you know th that's going to be a great fight now i was told the mendoza Cordo cordero fight is a f is going to be a fan favorite uh that's the word that i got was as we were going through this card as me and kevin were going through this card he got to this fight and he looked at me and said this fight is going to be a fight this fight is exciting um you know, there's one of those that you just don't have to say a lot of words about. You don't really have to sell it. Um, that he didn't really have to sell it for me to know this was going to be the fight of the night. So, I mean, it's we drop it right in the middle of the card. Uh, and, you know, it's it's this is going to be the one to watch uh, from 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 what i'm told um as far as it's gonna be the one to watch as far as fights that you're you don't already know about um you know every you know we've been talking about the other fights and and talking about how good they're going to be and we've had all the interviews this is the one that I, is you know the dark horse this is the one that people aren't talking about but it's going to be the one that people are going to talk about so um you know the mendoza Cordo cordero fight is is the one um and then uh anderson munoz uh again this is going to be a great fight i i personally know munoz uh anderson like i said uh had a tough fight against valdez but in that in that small time that they are in there together i was able to see he he comes with power um and i know he's got good wrestling so um he's no slouch uh you know augustine valdez is is a champ for a reason so um takes nothing away from doug anderson this is going to be a great fight. Um, and then Harris and Johns again, like I said, um, there's, I believe there's going to be a knockout in this fight. And it was again, confirmed by <laughs> my sit down with, uh, Kevin Patton that this is, there's going to be a knockout in this fight. It's going to be a good one to watch. Um, Marshall and Randall, another good fight. We already know them. We've seen them both in the ring plenty of times. And then Jacobson Caldwell fight is going to be another great fight. So starting off the night, starting off the night with a great fight. So this entire card is stacked. Now, you know, we don't have the funds that, you know, the UFC does to promote a fight. We do what we can do, but I'll tell you going through, being able to go through each and every fight and say, I'm excited about each one of these fights on the fight card. It makes me be able to put my head on my pillow at night and say I work for an organization that cares about their fighters and cares about their reputation and doesn't just throw things out there because they have to. Um, you know, this is this, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes in a lot of effort and thought that goes into these, um, these matchups and these fights. It's not just like, Hey, who wants to fight? Let's throw them together. And then once it is, it's all about the fighter. It's all about selling and promoting these fighters for what they are, which is, you know, they are the show. They are the reason that everyone shows up. So we need to get them that respect we need to show up we need to be there we need to support them they need to be getting sponsorships they need to be getting paid more they need to you know they need all this stuff but it all happens all of that happens from fans coming out to the show that's the bottom line uh 
everything good happens for these fighters if you come out and support them uh if you're a fighter and you're not on the card you should still come out and support you should still buy a ticket and pay for and pay for you know that price to come out the 35 dollars for for you know for a ga ticket to come out and support and and uh you know, and then expect them to do the same for you when you're out there fighting. If you're a fan, uh, if, you know, if you're a fan of the sport at all, you should just be out. It shouldn't just be going and watching the fighters that you know, but watching these up young up and comers or or the people that have just been at it forever and these you know these local legends that have just been doing it forever. Um, you know, it's it's all about it's all about the fans showing up and supporting the fighters that's that's how we're going to put utah on the map there's a lot of stuff that comes from uh from that there's lots of things there's lots of benefits that come to putting uh the utah fight game but it all starts with the fans showing up to the fights so that's my plea to you show up to this fight card this is one you i mean this is one that you're you're it'll be dumb to miss it'll be it'll be dumb to miss you will not have a bad time you will not have a bad night you will see great fights all around from start to finish on the card that's my guarantee uh you know this is going to be a fun night of fight so come out get your tickets find your fighter buy your tickets from the fighter get on the website stillfistfight.com and get your tickets uh please continue to watch the podcast like subscribe and share uh find us on youtube itunes and iHeartRadio. go to the instagram page at still fist fight and then go to the facebook page at still fist fight night everybody that's all i got for you be good to yourself be good to each other i love you let's begin